Hello, this is Joshua's Recordings, and welcome to the tour of Windows 7. What I'm going to do is to, um, show you some of the hidden features of Windows 7, and make it, um, and show you how to customize it and make it more user-friendly. We're also going to go through the um, control panel a little bit. Um, so let's get started, shall we? So when you just install Windows, it looks something like this. You get your background picture, a taskbar with sort of minimal stuff on it, and a desktop. Like Now, <clears throat> when you're, the pr primary reason I'm doing this is because Windows XP is going to go out in April. And I want to show you, show, show you Windows XP users that Windows 7 is not that hard to use. And just like Windows XP um, from Windows 2000, there are some hidden features and some changes. So, I'm gonna um, first I'm going to open up the Start menu. All your most used applications show up here. And Windows will just put some applications that it wants you to see here when you just got your uh, new installation. Now, if you want to search for a program, type in the program name. And then, if you want to see even more results, click on, click on the programs, and it'll open them in Windows Explorer, and you will get even more programs that you can see. Now, if you go to computer, you will have all your drives up at the top roll, uh, row, and they'll be called hard disk drives. Down in the middle row, you'll have devices with removable storage, like disk drives or cameras or USB sticks and stuff like that. On the bottom um, one, you're going to have network drives, such as a printer or a, an, a cloud drive or something like that. If you go to libraries, you have a couple of the libraries here, like documents, music, pictures, and videos. If you go into documents, of course there'll be nothing in there, but if you go into stuff like pictures, oops, there's, uh, sorry, I just deleted all that stuff. <laughs> so there's nothing, there, there'll be nothing much in any of these folders except for the sample documents, which you can delete, and I have. Um, So, you can also click, um, right click on the uh, taskbar and click properties. This will bring up your taskbar and start menu items. So, you can like click to the start menu and customize the start menu, like all this stuff, <laughs> which I sometimes do. But default settings are usually the best. And you have your toolbars here, which I have none. Some people like it looking like, looking like that, but. Now we're going to show you how to change like pictures and stuff like that. Go into the appearance and personalization. Click on personalization. Here are all your themes. I know this looks a little different than Windows XP, and I'll show you why this is easier to use. Down at the bottom, you have all your Windows options such as desktop background, window color, sounds and screensaver. Let's go into Windows Color, and I want to show you that you can choose almost any color that you want. And even these colors are not all the colors that you can get. You can actually have something called a color mixer, and you can mix almost any color that you want, and how, 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 how much of it you want. So that's why, as another reason, I think that Windows 7 is also pretty good. You can also choose the intensity like that. That's pretty intense, and then you can bring it down. I actually personally like it all the way down so that the windows are very transparent. If you click on desktop background, you'll have all of your desktop backgrounds, excluding all these backgrounds that I put in it, into it. Um, so that's cool. And you can also select multiple backgrounds, such as like this. And you can also choose how much you want them to change, like one day, 12 hours, one hour, and so on and so on. I have 10 seconds. That's my favorite. <laughs> um, you can also get more themes online from Microsoft. In system and security, you have all of your options here. You click on system and it'll give you all the information about your computer, your 
Um, it'll give you the details about is, um, if Windows is activated or not, which is actually pretty cool um, because of um, because like in Windows XP, I had to type in all these special keys and all that stuff. Now I'm going to show you the Windows Experience Index. Now what this is, is it's pretty much a way of grading your sim um, simply grading your components on a score of 1.0 to 7.9. You can have it rates your processor, uh, RAM, graphics, gaming graphics, and primary hard disk. In this case, we're using an SSD. And you have the rest of the tools here, which you're probably not going to need. And so that's, and also uh, and, uh, um, in programs, you have all the programs that you have currently installed. Of course, this will be pretty much empty when you get it. I just installed a lot of programs. Um, now. Another fun feature is the gadgets. Gadgets were available in Windows Vista, as you might remember. But if you're using Windows XP and don't really upgrade that much, you might not. So, if you open gadgets, you can um, you have this little transparent window that'll have all these gadgets in it, such as calendar clock, CPU meter, and all that great stuff. I'm going to show you what these gadgets look like and how to install them. All you do is either drag them to the position that you want on the desktop, like so. Click on the little um, wrench there and you can choose customization options you can even put a um, for the for the clock you can even put a name in it you can also choose other things now oh. and um, also you can just double click on a gadget and they'll appear and close them like that um, and you can also get more about gadgets from third-party sources like win7gadget.com and so, so on and so on. Um, you cannot get them from Microsoft anymore, unfortunately. Um, in Internet Explorer, we have some changes too. First, it's going to ask you to set up your Internet Explorer. We'll just say use recommended settings. It'll bring you to a page called Meet Your New Browser. And in this page, you'll pretty much be greeted by a little video um, about your browser. You can just close that. We don't need it. Um, now, if we go into here, you can get your old internet options, which was available in Windows XP. You might recognize this. Um, if you click here, like say we're just going and, whoops, I don't want to go there. Um, if we're just like having fun and, uh, you, uh doing stuff and, you want to, and you want to go back home, you click on the little home button, and it'll bring you to your current home page. Another very nice feature. Um, in Windows Media Player, first you'll be greeted by something that says, Welcome to Windows Media Player. And you have to set up all this. I recommend you use the recommended settings. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh... So just click finish, and it'll open up when it, when it, uh, it'll open up your library here. Now, you'll also see over here in other libraries. You can connect to other libraries if you're allowed access, which most people, um, which you probably will not if you're in like an office or something, which I'm not. So, in here you'll have all your music, which there's nothing in here right now, but you can also go in here and type in something that you want like just like something you want and it'll bring up this matches sorry i do not have any music in here right currently so i cannot show you that um you can also with a pretty long delay search your hard drive which is another added feature you used to have to go up in your little search window special search window and search you don't now um so also, if you have a lot of windows open, like let's let's just open a lot of windows, and um, like just open a lot of windows, and you want to go th go through all the windows. Well, I will show you how to do that. You click on the Windows key and tab, and it'll bring up this sort of cool animation that will allow you to cycle through your windows. To say your desktop looks crowded and you only want to see one window at a time, shake that window and everything else will close. Shake it again 
and everything else will open. That's another handy feature of Windows 7. Down here, the little flag, this is called your um, Action Center. When you first get it, it'll, it'll ask you to find antivirus and so on and so on. I recommend using Microsoft Security Essentials because it's free and it works pretty well. Also, if you want, get Malwarebytes Anti-Malware. I, I, I suggest the Pro version. So, this has been about it for my little tour of Windows 7. Please, if you're running out XP, please upgrade to either Windows 7 or Windows 8. They both cost about the same, so that's your decision. And we hope that you've enjoyed this video. Can't perform.